Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of videos about games and the people who played them. And now, here's your host, Joe Stedman. Hi, Joe Stedman, and uh, I want to talk to you about a game I got. Now, I've been doing a lot of stuff with ASL lately, but I got a game recently, and I thought I'd tell you guys about it. It's very interesting. All right, a little background. Well, um, one of my favorite non-ASL games, that's World War II Tactical, is a game called Upfront, which is actually a card game. And um, card game, but not like uh, a traditional card game. You actually control individual soldiers, and uh, it's tactical and whatnot, and you have to really know Upfront. Now, Upfront by Avalon Hill has been out of production for many years, and uh, there's n nowhere I've heard that it's going to come back anytime soon. It'd be great if it did, but I read some other people talking about a new game that came out that reminded them a little bit of Upfront, and so I uh, asked around and I got myself a copy. And that game is Panzer General Allied Assault by Ubisoft. Uh, Ubisoft, UBI Soft, is a software company. I mean, I know I I got my uh, Silent Hunter submarine simulation game from them for my computer, and I um, was interested. And Panzer General was an old game I used to play on the computer years ago. So, how could this possibly be like up front? Well, let me open the box, show you what's inside, and then talk about my experiences so far playing the game. Got your basic paper rule book, um, full color, not glossy, just regular paper. It's got the example play in the back. You got your scenarios built right in to the rule book. So that's that. It also comes with one cardstock uh, cheat sheet. It's got the sequence of play on it and the combat, all the modifiers for combat. And all these little marker tokens I used to bowl. But there you go. So here we have a game that I set up, ready to go. Well, actually, this is after the first turn. And you can see as my cards are all unrevealed, big bluff aspect of this game. And then uh, the control markers. Each card has a value, uh, prestige value. And uh, the way you win the game is by either capturing the home, home spot of the enemy or three adjacent, kind of like battle line, uh, the three adjacent. Or at the end of six turns, there's a couple of tiebreakers. Game takes about, uh, give yourself at least an hour to play, um, depending on the size scenario, but it, I think it average about an hour. So it's a two player game, you could play one, takes about an hour to play. So the American player was victorious, captured the capital city, game over. So here's a basic American card, lots of information. Um, you see that it's a soft target, what it fights against in hard targets, what it fights against in soft targets. That's the value that it adds to help other people in their battles if you're adjacent. That's its defense and that's its morale. This up here is its sacrifice value, which is really neat. These recruits are at really high sacrifice. It's kind of funny because you can sacrifice the recruits to get seven. This is a very neat uh, thing down here is the deck. So this card here is part of A, C, and H deck. So when you're building your scenario, look at the scenario card, it'll show you what deck to use. So this card could be used in those three different decks. And the bottom here, the little diamonds, the prestige, how much basically this card is worth the cost of play. And down in the left-hand corner is the fate number, or they call that the tactical modifier, but basically it's fate. You use that for die rolls, like to see who would win. And during the combat phase, after all the results are totaled, you flip over one card to see what modifier it gives you. So, and there's been a few battles that Matt made the difference of who won or lost. So, how do you play Panzer General Allied Assault? It's a two-player game. I uh, on your turn, you uh, each scenario is a different length. But let's say it's a six-turn game. I do my half the turn. You do your half the turn. We go to turn two, turn three, turn four, turn five, turn six. So on your turn, first thing you do is you're going to draw cards to build your hand. You get a certain amount of cards for free. Then you can spend your prestige points after that to buy additional cards up to a certain limit. And then you start your turn. And on your turn, each card on a table um, 
can do one action and those actions are things as move or initiate combat. Certain cards will be able to move more than one spot. Most cards can only move one spot. Combat is always orthogonically, meaning left and right, never diagonal. Um, and combat's very simple. You take, you add up all the attacker and all his modifiers, any units that want to help out with the attack. And if you want to attack, your card will have a little uh, support value. You get a total number. Then you take the defender and you add up all his modifiers for his defense versus tanks, the terrain he's in and everything like that, and all the stuff's labeled, and you get a total. You subtract the two. You play cards. as a, you play Each play one card is a sacrifice card, so it's a little bit hand management. You can choose to uh, sacrifice a very good card to give you a plus seven, or you can play the bluff card, which is a zero. You get, each player has one card that's worth zero that you can play in case you don't want to play any other card. Then you get a total number. Once you get the total number, that's the difference, then you flip one last card, a random card, it's the, like the fate card, which will give you anywhere from a minus two to a plus three, and then that's the difference. Take that number there, let's say it's a four, then you look at the little chart, and it'll tell you how much damage or morale loss that the loser will take. If the loser takes morale equal to its defense, or more, it's eliminated, and less than that, he'll just add markers, and those markers will stay on that card until it's eliminated, and it also affects future combat. If it's got a negative three power or a negative three morale, it'll fight less effectively in future turns. And uh, besides moving and attacking, you can also put new cards on the map, and you can put new cards in any space that you control, but a new card ha can do no other actions and you have to pay the prestige value to put it on the map in any spot that you control. One neat little thing is your capital city is a minus eight to play a card there. So even if you're out of money, you're always gonna be able to put a card in your capital city um, every other turn because most cards cost less than eight. The components are average quality, not up to like a Euro game or some of the new war games with the high quality components. But they're not shoddy either. They're just kind of a middle grade quality. The cards are average. The artwork's all historical pictures and things. The the modular board pieces are uh, double sided cardboard. Cardboard. But overall, a good game. Leads itself to a lot of strategy and how you deploy your forces. How you re, uh, respond to the enemy and combinations of setting up supporting units next to each other uh, for your attack, using the terrain effectively. So, I think it's worth it. I would recommend the game, and I know it will see plenty of playtime at my house. So there you have it. Panzer General, Allied Assault. Also, I forgot to mention that there's a one-player... Uh, way you can play the game. There's a set of rules for a single player. I played a, a couple scenarios that way. Not, not nearly as fun as a two player, but <coughs> but not too bad. Not too bad at all for a solo game. I just played a guy at work here and he wants to play the D-Day scenario next. We just played one of the smaller scenarios. So we're going to set it up and play the D-Day scenario. He liked it a lot and he doesn't play games. So that's another thing to think of. It's uh, easy enough that uh, a newbie can jump right in and play a pretty good introductory war game. Um, better than a Memoir 44. Just my opinion. So, all right. So talk to you later, Dice Tower fans. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.